Hello students, welcome back for color theory. This is going to be color test C, not the test now, we're doing the actual project. Um, I just want to look back at D that we did on class last Tuesday. Here is a digital version of that. And then I tried one with like the darker colors where I'm mixing them together. This is the actual project that I'm painting. So I'm using red and blue with a little bit of green. So let's get started. Um, so probably the easiest thing to do as we get started is to go through and paint the background first. So that's what I decided to do. I'm loading up my um, brush right now off camera with red paint. I think I'm going to need extra, so I put some down. And here we go. We're going to start using that and painting in the background. Um, the first thing that I'm going to do, I could have taped this down. I did not do that for this um, exercise, but sometimes that helps you to get a nice clean edge. I am going to paint around the outside edges first. And if I overlap a little bit and get onto that foreground face area, it's going to be okay. Um, I'm going to go through and paint that in second. So I'm not too worried if I overpaint on this first stage. Because the blue area is so big, I'm not trying to cover the whole entire picture with the red. But I am trying to get right up to the edge. And if I have to err on one side or another, I'm going to go ahead and err on the side that I actually paint onto the face. It's okay if that happens. And that way I don't have any white gaps. You want to avoid gaps of white. It will um, kind of end up messing with the effect of this color field, you know, influence. So it's better to overpaint than to underpaint and have that white gap. So kind of flipping this around, whatever angle is more comfortable for me when I go through and paint this in. Finishing off the top edge here. So I have a big one inch brush. It's a flat brush, so it holds a lot of paint and it can make a nice even line. It's not perfect on the outside edge, but it definitely, um, gives me a pretty straight line if I want it to. So now that we have that, I'm going to just touch up a couple spots here. Um, when you see that your paint is thin in certain areas, it's a good idea to go through and try to make it more solid and try to fix that in some way or another. Um, I'm switching brushes here. I wanted to paint the mouth in and the nose in with that same red color. It's a much smaller space. I could try to do it with my bigger brush, but I think it would be a lot harder. So to try and avoid that, I'm going to go through and just use a smaller brush. So this is about a quarter inch brush. Um, and this is also, I think it's a rigger. So it's a rounded end instead of flat and it's long also. Again, I can use this also to find those little edges along the sides. Um, often when you're trying to be very precise and get those edges, sometimes you paint it just a little bit thin. So this can help you do a second coat on top of that and fill in those areas. As far as the different demonstrations that I've done, this one I feel like it is one of the more opaque and well kind of painted in ones. So I'm going to switch the orientation of my palette here. I'm rinsing out my brushes so that I can have a clean um, area to mix with and hopefully a clean brush or cleanish. So now I'm going to try to mix a blue. Blue is naturally a little bit darker than red. So I need to lighten it. So you'll see me grabbing quite a bit of white to make a lighter version of this. Um, and keep adding a little blue in there. I think eventually I figure out 
that it's pretty close. So I can hold it up to try and test it. But this time I'm going to try not to paint outside the lines necessarily. I'm going to paint very close to them. But I don't want to start the battle of red on top of blue, blue on top of red. The more times you overlap them, they can start to kind of build together and make a very dark area. So it's a lot easier if I just do this where I'm just painting in the blue areas and then I can go back with a smaller brush and get the little smaller pieces um, and kind of make those edges nicer when I have something that has more control as opposed to this that's a little bit bigger and a little bit clumsier. So we're about halfway now, maybe a little bit past that. Now I've got my smaller brush. Um, I believe that even though I go through and paint these on here, I think I go through and paint a lot of these edges more than once. And that has to do with the fact that I did put the red and I let it go past the line. Um, but that way I'm going to ensure that I don't have any white gaps, which will make this look weird. So um, I'll probably go around the whole outside edge, paint the whole thing in with blue, have that all together, and then go back and repaint those areas where maybe the red is still showing through. Um, sometimes you have to go over it twice for the blue to actually look like it's solid and kind of covers over the red, especially if you don't wait for it to dry. Um, that can be a very big mistake is trying to paint these both at the same time. You need to make sure that the red is dry when you start to paint the blue so they don't blend together. That can be a very um, hard lesson if you start to do it and then start to paint and then you find out that it's something wet. Um, there's a time and a place for wet paint and for blending, and that's usually an oil painting. For this class, right now, we're still doing very flat color areas. So that's what we're kind of setting up for. Got most of that painted in. Got a little bit around the mouth here. And then a little bit up the top of the head as well, or the face. And these rigger brushes are very good for holding quite a bit of paint so I don't have to keep grabbing too much paint all the time. There we go. That one's all cleared out. Um, get the last little bits here. And then we'll go up and paint the top. So now we just need to paint the part up here at the top. Get a little more blue paint right there. And that will finish out the part that has the blue and after that we'll go in and paint the eyes try to get a green that matches the value of the blue and the red and that's the main thing we're trying to do here bright colors at the same value that's how you get color vibration and that's the point of this exercise so here we transition i've already painted a little bit of it We'll go through and fill it in, maybe go over it one more time and get that green nice and filled in. And, you know, if it works and it's working pretty well and we kind of slightly shake the paper, it will go through and you can see the vibration. It will hurt your eyes. Now, the camera won't pick it up as well as the actual project looks, but it's pretty close. Um, and then I went through at the end and tried to redo this um, digitally. So here is the digital version. It's a lot closer. I kind of just unified those colors. Here is a redo of example A in a digital version. It's definitely working better. Here is a version of example B. And I like how this one ended up just a little bit better. So good luck, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.